Hi everyone. So this uh, comic was recommended to me by uh, several people, actually probably the most recommended comic. And I kind of put it off because, uh, and this is a subject for another video, uh, I don't think, the funny thing is I don't think Superhero is a very good comic book character. I think of him more as a TV and movie character. And that's because uh, I think the appeal of the character is mostly from the charisma of the actor. Um, so uh, the superhero, uh, uh, the Superman comics, I read them, but I'm kind of like dead. <laughs> and I'm just like a computer judging them very rationally. Like, I don't really get excited by them. Um, and especially when I found out it was two kids, I was just kind of like, oh, that sounds annoying. Because um, one of the things that, uh, one of the many things <laughs> modern comic writers are really bad at is writing kids. Because a lot of them are childless. Um, and uh, they usually write them as like, woke adults like they're smarter than adults even though they're five or eight um but the art was great on this i did uh i did a uh, video yesterday where i talked about even though this was a much better story this is a much better character because things pop this is well drawn um pretty good composition not perfect but uh the coloring just makes everything kind of like y your eye doesn't know where to go so we get a uh, situation where um uh Sociopath Robin and uh, Superboy, or Super Son, I don't even know what his superhero name is. Uh, they're both grounded for, because of, I guess, the first story arc. I mean, so let's just start off at, with this panel. This is literally just a kid pouting at a computer console, and it's amazing. I mean, uh, Marvel has basically quit doing splash pages, and on paper, this is literally like uh, Damien Pout's Damien pouts at a computer console while Alfred feeds a dog. Um, and that's it. And this right here is good. So the first, so uh, he's, uh, basically they just get you, he's um, grounded. Super Sun is grounded. Um, the art is just really great. I love it. This is uh, Allison, what's her name? Flipping. Allison Brony, something like that. Borges, Allison Borges, and she just does a, a great job. I, I've never heard of this person. Um, I'm not going to assume she's a woman because I've done that a lot with uh, European names and found that it was a man. But um, So the thing that was so great about this is, like I said earlier, the kids are actually talking and behaving as children of their age. So I'm guessing that the uh, writer, uh, Peter Tomasi, who I've, I've, I've always liked, he's one of those things... He's very, uh, he's very solid. He's more of like a TV writer. It's not about him and his politics and his eccentricities. It's very much about the story. Um, so uh, the, the other thing that I thought was interesting is that Super Sun, so they're moving to Metropolis. He really doesn't want to do it. There's a lot of uh, things in modern media where um, they're always um, down and denigrating living in the suburbs or the country and living in a city. Even a very crowded one is considered the ideal and the goal of everyone. And uh, I haven't found that true in life. <laughs> uh, basically, all I've, I've found people uh, going to big cities briefly and then uh, wanting to leave. Um, so, uh, yeah, he wants to stay, and he's kind of, he basically uh, has a tantrum. It's a very kid-style tantrum. It's like uh, not running away, but he just needs to go vent. He goes to the city. He just doesn't like it. So then uh, this is what, this is the part that I really love because it really rang true. So uh, Super Son and uh, Damien... I mean, this page is just funny It's because there's, it's like really over the top. But like, you know how you were, when you're a kid, you get spooked, you get like ridiculously spooked. So they both spooked each other. Um, this also reminds me a lot of uh, me and my best friend when, uh, when uh, we were kids hanging out is we'd spend a whole like day together and we'd probably get in two or three fights just when this. But it was like these really brief fights and then you go back to being best friends like five minutes later. So this is this is what it reminded me of. But, I mean, look at this. This is a double-page spread. We just saw a double-page spread in that uh, Trash in Invincible Iron Man where it was just like an establishing shot and then the same uh, photo uh, or the same panel copied eight times. Okay, so, again, on the page, this is literally just... It's two pages of Super Sun and Damien talking about... They're basically arguing and like little kid. Obviously, they're friends, but they're both trying to act like they're not friends. So they're like arguing, and then they're about to get in a little, another little fight. Um, but it, it, but look how beautiful it is. So they do um, desaturated colors for kind of like the the past version, 
and it gets progressively um, <coughs> brighter as it gets closer to the reader and closer to you know current uh, current time, as John Oliver uh, would say. But I mean, just look at this. Look at this. The composition. Nothing is traced. This guy obviously knows how to do backgrounds. We get this great amount of you know people there. It's amazing. So then we get this fight, and again, the fight is really fun. Um, I, the fight might have been bigger, <laughs> so we got two pages of walking, and the fight is kind of squeezed into like one page, but look at all the variety. It's great. Look at this, where he's throwing all the, the robin, um, whatever is, the batterings are called for a robin. Um, and then this fight works pretty good. So I don't know, is Super Sun like not totally invulnerable? Because he's getting punched like it actually affects him. Um, great one. Oh, so uh, then it gets inter interrupted by <laughs> Alfred. And, uh, okay, sidebar on this Deathstroke Defiance. So, the tagline is, what do you get when a bad man turns good? Justice with an attitude. That was pretty cringy. And this, these, um, uh, the, uh, what was I going to say? The team is just looks ridiculous. And then, I'm, I'm just looking, I'm just like, okay. I'm like, no, this is not Deathstroke. And it's embar embarrassing. This is an embarrassing, uh, uniform but then i saw christopher priest i'm like okay i'm in i'm gonna i'm gonna try the first issue okay so there's a joke here that is actually funny so i've talked about how sjw comics are all essentially archie comics because they don't really like superhero comics and then we talked about chip zadarsky who's like this like glad hander who just gets handed all the funny books because he's funny according to people who aren't funny but uh i laugh this is a this is a really good joke um, uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's the classic, uh, humor thing of you're kind of focused inward. And then the, the, uh, the punchline involves you, you know, going farther out. It's like, Oh, that's funny. So then, um, the other thing I like about it is that Alfred, um, talks to them like he's an adult and they're children. And we saw in the wasp, like the, ki uh, like Jarvis and the, uh, um, Matt Murdock were around, but it's like, they were just like. It's like they were like adults the way adults are in those sitcoms Disney has for tweens where they're just goofs or they just kind of stand by. They're like, you're the stars, kid. It's like, no, you're an adult. Your job is to like protect them and teach them and guide them, not to just be like, you're awesome. Um, so they're arguing and he basically says what an adult would say. Like, hey, your fathers used to not get along and they learned. Uh, these are like good, solid life lessons. And then they show up and... I don't know, Damien, who I don't really like, uh, but the, the dialogue's pretty funny. <laughs> so he, they, they show up, and he's like, uh, what does he say? He goes, diabolical. How would you like it if I followed you everywhere and listened in on your conversations? And then Batman says, you do. So then they say the same thing. They're like, yeah, we used to, be, we used to have problems. We realized we had a lot of similarities. And then there's a funny little bit where he's like, uh, Superman says, who do you think would win if we fought? And Batman says, me. And he goes, but I'm stronger and I can fly. Um, me. He says, I think your cow's too tight. So this isn't the funniest joke in the world, but it's literally funny than every joke Chip Zdarsky put in his humor book. So uh, then it ends, and they basically, uh, Superman and uh, Batman basically say, hey, obviously it's going to be hard to ground a kid ninja in a kid god, effectively. <laughs> So you guys can have adventures, but you have to stick together, which, boom, now we have a justification, official justification for this being called Super Sons. So uh, then we get, you know, the, the next chapter is they're officially um, sanctioned to, to work together. So it's like, all right, cool. That was a great story. I can't believe it. Like I said, the, the good stories are always shorter videos <laughs> and then the bad stories because there's only so many ways to say this is well drawn, well written, and the people act like humans. So um, there's this word verisimilitude, and I don't know the exact uh, definition of it, but it's basically like you can have people do, you can have a half-human kid like leap flying through the city, you can have a five-year-old ninja, that's fine as long as they have things that a normal person can identify with, such as actual human emotions. So that's what we get. We got kids acting like kids, even if though this guy killed people and he's like, what is he, like seven? Um, uh, but it, it really works because of that. This is a good book for, I'd say, basically anyone. Just kind of like Gwenpool. They keep trying to expand the, the reader base, and then they make these cringy comics that even they don't want to read. I'm talking about Marvel, not DC. But uh, this is literally one you can just hand someone. Now, they might roll their eyes. They're like, oh, geez, little kids, super sons. 
but they'll be on board, you know, by the end of the story. Then we get um, uh, a good uh, a good preview of the Aquaman um, new story arc. Oh, issue twenty five. So it's not a it's not a reboot. Some really good art. Uh, this guy Stepin Sajic. He's real active on social media. He's a really good guy. Really funny. Um, he's been doing this thing where he he's just been rushing through things a lot. He hasn't been doing fully finished art, and it really shows. So in this one, he's doing fully finished art, and it looks great. So it's got Danny Abnett, who is part of you know the DNA. Danny Abnett, Andy Lanning. They did. They've done a lot of like cosmic space books. So now they're doing uh, you know obviously the opposite under the ocean, but they do a good job of, it kind of, I mean, this really reminded me of Star Wars. I love the prequels, so it kind of reminded me of the prequels. Um, but they really established the world <laughs> in that, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, cl- this has been in Judge Dredd and in Star Wars. Like, the lower levels are where the lower classes, and uh, Aquaman is basically hide- hiding down here as a worker. We get some, uh, we get some uh, good dialogue that brings you up to speed. It explains why... Um, uh, Arthur isn't the king. Who the king is now? This group that wants to reinstall Arthur, but it it install it uh, establishes how difficult uh, it is for them. And then we get to see that you know obviously living in the, like the basically the ghetto of uh, I don't know what Aquaman's kingdom is, um, whatever it is. Oh no, Atlantis. Um, the so uh, <laughs> then he almost gets discovered, um, but he doesn't. And then um, basically, it's it's a good setup. I wouldn't say I'm very very interested in it, but it's enough to get me to give it a try, which is what previews are supposed to do. Most of these things, even the DC ones, they end up turning me off, and it just doesn't seem that interesting. Then there's this uh, Batman: The War of Jokes and Riddles. It's another event. It's another thing. Uh, now this is the one given to Tom King. I'm very leery about it. I think with Tom King and Scott Snyder, they are over praising, over hyping, and over extending them too early. Too early in Tom King's writing career, so, and it's one of those things where it's just like, um, there, it's two criminals going to a gang war over who has the right to uh, kill Batman, which just when I was talking about that verisimilitude, right here, that doesn't have verisimilitude because uh, Joker's more of a murder artist than a like hardcore criminal, but he's still like he still needs to amass money. You know, and um, again, uh, a Riddler is kind of a performance artist criminal, so he likes to get attention. But he still, the, the fact that they would basically forego making money to fight over the right to kill someone that they probably neither can kill themselves, it just it doesn't have that. There's there's several disconnects in how a human being ever thinks. Where it's like one of these guys would just be like, "What the hell? I'm trying to." You know, I'm trying to pay off this guy. I'm trying to move into this territory. Now I got to get into a fake gang war over a guy I probably can't even kill for the right to kill him. Like, eh, I didn't think it worked that much. So anyway, uh, oh yeah, and uh, where's the code? I didn't see the code. It says it's got a code. Oh yeah. So email me if you want the code. Um, great book. It's a great book to give to kids. It's a great book to give to people who don't like comics or they just haven't ever been exposed to them. So, uh, Super Sons number five, check it out. And uh, later today, I'm going to review Green Lanterns 25. I've actually had a lot of people suggest this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit notifications to make sure you get uh, notice of all my videos. Thanks.